from continent to continent on schedule. Less than half of a century ago, conquering airspace for humanity was similar to the challenge of going to space today. No, not one technology solved the issue. The most important part was to bring humanity together. Handshake over the pole. Correspondents from the Colombian newspaper were notified from Seattle, Washington on June 18, 1975. A huge silver and blue airliner landed softly on the landing strip at the Seattle-Tacoma airport on Tuesday morning. Before we could observe the characteristic emblem of the hammer and sickle and the half dozen numbers identifying it as a Soviet plane, it came to a stop. The plane had traced a historic route, the first flight over the North Pole into America in 1937. Aboard were Georgi Baidukov, co-pilot of the historic flight, Alexander Belikov, navigator, and Igor Chikolov, the son of the head pilot Valery Chikolov, who died in 1938 during a test flight of a new fighter plane. These Soviet heroes were invited by the citizens of Vancouver, Washington, where their plane landed in 1937. They will participate in the unveiling of a monument raised in their honor. What do you think of this big day? A street named Chikolov will now be on American soil. Honoring Chikolov, you are honoring our Soviet peoples, who have always strived for peace and friendship with American people. Dear friends, dear friends, citizens of the United States of America, the sincere friendship of your people is based on good and strong feelings of love between our peoples. And now there are circumstances that will transfer our friendship into successful business relationships with very capable, talented, and professional Americans. The first monument in the U.S. in honor of Soviet people. It stands on the banks of the Columbia River. And this is a monument of Chikolov on the banks of the Volga River. Chikolov's two-river metaphor, spoken from the balcony of the Marshall House in 1937, has not been forgotten. There are two rivers, the Columbia and the Volga, which are found on two different continents, have different dispositions and characters, and whose shores are enclosed by dissimilar mountains and forests. They flow, however, on one and the same planet, not troubling one another, and, in the final analysis, turn out to be elements of the same world ocean. And so must the peoples of the Soviet Union and the United States live on the same globe peacefully and with cooperative effort decorate this ocean of human life. <laughs>